you know, it's it, penalty kill is a big commitment. Yeah. Uh, shot blocking, uh, taking hits, uh, battle situations because you're you're down a man. Um, so based on your penalty kill, it can, as far as identity wise for your team, it can be a pretty good indicator. How, how did that get you into the game and get the crowd into the game last night? The penalty you're, kill? Yeah, you're seven for seven on the kill. Well, I don't know if it was so much our our penalty kill. You know, I've, I've watched a good yeah, portion of it. Our goalie was pretty good. Our yeah. goalie was our best penalty killer, yeah. which he has to be. But they had some point blank opportunities, and they're going to get their 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 chances because they're they're a highly skilled group. They've been together for a long time, and <clears throat> they're really good at supporting the puck and making those little plays. Um, uh, you know, seven for seven, you come out of the game, and I think they scored one right at the end. I think their third goal was right as a right. as we were coming out yeah. of the box, which probably still is a power play goal. Uh, it, it's, it's obviously a point of emphasis. Um, we have to be better. Our, our up ice was, was pretty good, but our end zone has to get a lot better. And just watching it, we got to you know, continue to talk and teach uh, to get better. Todd, if you keep getting the <clears throat> goaltending you've gotten so far, how much does that impact positively your ability to, to do the things you want to do? I mean, a team plays more confidently in front of solid goaltending. How much does that help you as a coach? Well, it helps me as a coach because you're still in the game. Um, if, if we're giving up goals, it's, it's tougher to coach. You might have to start changing lines and start doing different things to, to try to get back into the game. And, uh, systematically, it helps uh, when you're trying to sell something to the players that it works uh, because they'll be into it for a longer period. At least they'll buy into it. So it's, it's, it's important with the, with the goaltending. you got seven <clears throat> games in 11 days starting tomorrow. This is a wicked stretch. This is when the 48-99 really becomes crystallized. Eh? It's it's important, it, it, you know. This travel when you go out west like this too, and you're changing time zones, and you're only out there for a couple days, and then you got to turn around and come home, and you're home for a couple days, and you got to head back out again. Uh, the end of it is going to be a, a real challenge for us. We aren't the only team that's going to have to do it. Other teams are going to have to do it too, but we're going to get tested here. Nashville's heading out on a, on a lengthy road, road trip. Um, I think the New York Islanders just enlisting. I think they're getting ready to head out too. So everyone has to do it. It's going to be tough. It's going to be demanding. And that's why I said we're, we're going to need everyone. We're going to need both goaltenders. We're going to need, we got seven defense. We're probably going to need seven. And, you know, we have 14 forwards right now. So we're going to need everyone. When do you get these the healthy scratches the first two games? When do you get those guys in? Uh, I, I may look at maybe a change uh, going into Phoenix. Okay. And, and will we see this year um, guys going into the lineup and guys being made healthy scratches, not performance related, but rest related, purely rest related? I think there's something, and that's what we're going to have to dis discuss as a coaching staff about getting fresh likes and in, into a game. Um, you know, and having guys there. That's why it's important when when you aren't playing the games and you're you're sitting out that. You're ready to go. I mean, because it's important for you to step in and have a have a positive impact in the game. You've got a lot of guys that play multiple forward positions as well. Does that allow you to sprinkle a, a guy in uh, and give Snowbirds one guy could spell three or three different positions some night? Not I, one night, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I know exactly what you're. And, and you're right. Uh, you know, based off of last night with all the the power play and penalty kills, uh, you may take a Matt Calvert or Jared Bowl and and put them up either on left wing or right wing just to give somebody a breather if they, you know, we had back-to-back -back power plays and that can be taxing a game like that because the game is fast and especially with the number of games now. So it, it's, uh, right now it's a, it's kind of a balancing act and I know it's early and guys are fresh and they want to play but I think you, as a coach you still have to be smart in how you're managing the time because this will catch up to you, yeah. you know, in a week or two. Jack's at 29 minutes. Well, I think Jack. I think there, I think but... Jack can play forty-five. So and you just let him go. So so I, like this. Well, no, we have to monitor it. Okay. You know, he can't, uh, and, and it's based on his play too. You know, he's got to be solid. He's got to be good. Um, but he's a guy that can handle those big minutes. Plan to have uh, Mason start one of the next two games, or just in case of riding a hot hand with uh, Bobrovsky. Yeah, the, the plan is that Mason start one of these two games. Okay. More likely Colorado. Or
you're still deciding or not, not divulging? Not not divulging. <laughs> you guys know you can't ask me these questions yeah, the day the before shot. the it's game. It's worth a shot.